All right. We are live. Welcome to the monthly Ask Me Anything. Um, I'm Ted, founder and CEO of Kick and Kin. Uh, looking forward to taking questions today. So I've explained the rules in the past. If you want to read those, uh, you're free to go through them. But I thought we just, we have half an hour here, so let's just jump right in. Okay. Here we go. How are the first three to five ecosystem partnerships coming along? Are they signed and soon to be announced this month, or are you still negotiating? So we're going to have an update at the end of this month. So by March 31st, we'll give an update to all of you on which partnerships we have signed. Um, I think that's all we'll be able to talk about. We won't be able to talk about any that aren't signed yet but are in the works. Uh, so we'll do that later this month. I think the, the thing that's been going really well for us is it's clear from absolutely every partner we talk to, up to and including people with hundreds of millions of users, that this is something they need. They need a new monetization model. You know, by trying to compete for advertising dollars against the monopolies of Facebook and Google, it's just a losing game. And so I think like literally everybody we've talked to has been super excited about Kin. The thing we've been working through, as we talked before, is you know, the tax side. What does this mean for taxes for us and for our users? It's the regulatory side. There's so many questions around the regulation. And then even the technology side, they're saying, hey, we saw you put this in Kik last year and it absolutely crashed on the Ethereum network with just 1,000 users. So you say you're going to fix that with Stellar, but we want to see you do that. And so I would say at this point, the discussions could not be going better. Uh, we're making good progress. We're working through a lot of stuff. This is a brand new space, uh, but we look forward to giving you all an update at, um, you know, in less than 20 days from now. So that should be exciting. Okay. We're now steadily moving closer to the full integration of Kin into Kick and the first integration into ecosystem apps. But so far, we've seen very little mainstream marketing to generate hype for Kin. Fair enough. When will the promotion promotional strategy for Kin start ramping up? The key to doing a promotional strategy is, is you need to have a call to action. You need to be able to say, hey, we believe this. You know, we believe the world needs a new monetization model as developers. We believe the world needs a new way for consumers to get compensated when they use those digital services. But then a bunch of people can say, you know what, I believe too, I believe that too, so what should I do next? And right now the answer is, you know, go to our Reddit or go to our Telegram. And certainly, you know, that's where I'm now hanging out. I hang out on Reddit, I, I like it the best. Uh, so I'm in there as Ted on Reddit. Um, but we don't yet have sort of a, a clear message, a clear action item, call to action for either mainstream consumers or, or developers. And so once we have that five minute SDK market that any developer can use to integrate Kin into their apps, once we have that five minute, or once we have that Kin reward engine that any developer can compete for to get compensated, and once we can actually say to consumers, look at all these great places you can go to earn and spend Kin, there really isn't an action item. It really isn't a call to action. And so that's what we're waiting for now is really putting those pieces in place where this does work for millions of users at scale. It is available in a bunch of apps. Those developers are getting paid and we can really start to promote that story and promote that message. So you'll see us starting to roll that out once we have those pieces in place. Will we be able to purchase Kin in-app directly with Fiat or will we always have to use an exchange? In the short term, you will have to use an exchange, but in the medium to long term, you'll probably be able to buy it directly from within apps. And so let me explain that. What we found with Kick Points when we did that in 2014 and 2015, you know, sort of the prototype currency that millions of people used inside of Kick. Uh, sort of a prototype for what Kin then became, is we found that it was sort of important to launch a new currency in a new economy, this digital economy, this kick economy, 
that was separate from the existing physical economy. And why that was important is when somebody would watch an ad for kick points and we give them 100 points, if they could then go calculate, wait a second, so 100 points, that's worth eight cents. They'd be like, wait a second, is I have to watch all these ads and I'm only getting eight cents per ad. Instead, what we did is we said, hey, no, 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 this is not about the pennies you get for the physical economy. This is about the kick points you get for this new virtual economy. And so it was, hey, I'll watch an ad, I'll get 100 kick points because I only need 200 kick points in order to buy a Smiley. And so in the early stages of CAN, we think it's gonna be pretty important that this is, consumers are earning CAN, providing value, getting compensated to earn CAN and Kick and all these other digital apps, not for what they can then, you know, take that CAN, take it out to an exchange, sell it, and then buy in the real world. You know, it's gonna be hard to host enough group chats or, um, you know, give enough advice or create enough stickers that you could pay your mortgage. Instead, it's about what you can buy in this digital economy, this kin economy. So in the beginning, it's important that they're not sort of explicitly tied together in these apps. But over time, as this kin economy grows and you know there's more and more people earning in it, there's more and more people spending in it, then very naturally, as new people come into this economy and we're later stages in the economy, you know, hopefully the price of kin has gone up, kin has gotten more valuable because the supply is fixed, that's where consumers will start to say, wow, I'm late to the game in this economy. Um, if I now want to participate, I have to host, you know, not one group chat, but 10 group chats because there's so many people who got here before me. Is there any way that I can sort of buy into the game where I can get in, you know, just buy in because I was late to this? And, you know, the answer will be yes. You can go out to an exchange. You can put down $10, get can and bring that into the economy and get sort of that head start in the economy, this economy that you're late to. And so as more and more consumers start to do that, because more and more people are earning and spending inside of this kin economy, then it will make more sense over time to add more and more ways to just purchase directly from fiat in all of these digital services directly. But first in the beginning, we need to get that economy up and running. I'm hosting a group chat to get 10 kin because I want to crowdfund your next sticker or because I want to get your fashion advice for 5K. So in the beginning, we've got to build that digital economy, but over time, I will add Fiat as well. I'm gonna refresh here. Okay, I'm not looking at the comments, below the main topics. Um, I'm just looking at the topics themselves. Okay, the SEC, I just wanna show you on the skateboard. Okay, given the possibility that the SEC seems, SEC seems to be ready to consider ICOs as grounds for even utility tokens crossing over into securities territory, what measure are you taking to ensure that KIN is fully compliant? And will this impact functionality at all? For example, will users have to do KYC? Can you assure users and investors that every precaution is being taken to ensure that the future of the CAN ecosystem is fully above board and compliant with global regulations? Good question. Kaiser. Okay. I think this is a super important question. And this is a question that you know, as a billion dollar company, as a company that's nine years old, at this point, over nine years old, we have taken very seriously from day one. So from day one, when we first said to our board, hey, we're considering this idea, it's a little bit crazy because we can't monetize another any other way. We've tried all the other ways, they don't work. We need a new way to monetize, a new way to compete and you know, a new way to build value for consumers. They said, okay, well, that's a bit of a crazy idea. Like, what are the rules around that? And so we spent a lot of time and a lot of money working with lawyers, doing everything we could to make sure we followed all the rules that we knew about. So for example, when we did our uh, token distribution event and 10,000 people from 117 countries bought some kin, in order for them to do that, they had to submit a passport 
and and we would verify that passport. So we verified over 10,000 passports from 117 countries. You know, it's cool. It felt like we were in the customs office stamping passports. But we did that because we wanted to make sure that this was as compliant as possible, the most up to date with regulations as possible, even though that nobody else in the space was doing this. Nobody did it back then. And even to date, I'm, I'm not sure how many people have actually required passports from every single person to participate. And the reason we did that is we just have a lot to lose. You know, Kick is worth a billion dollars. And so, you know, our investors, I give them credit for saying, hey, you know what? This crypto crazy, this cryptocurrency idea is a little crazy, but let's go for it. But at the same time, let's get the best lawyers, let's do a ton of homework, and let's do this in the safest way possible. Now, going forward, the question is, you know, that was back in September, we did our token distribution event. And since then, you know, there's continues to be lots of talk around these tokens, you know, and you hear from the SEC and others, are these tokens securities? Are they uh, currencies? Uh, you know, what's the difference and how should they be regulated? And one of the interesting thought experiments that we found to be helpful is the following. You know, what we said is, okay, what is a security? You know, if I buy a stock in Apple, why am I buying it? I'm buying it because it gives me a right to a piece of the future profits of Apple. That's why I buy Apple stock. And, and in fact, the way you value a stock and how much should I pay for the stock is you do something called a discounted cash flow analysis. So you say, hey, let's look at all the profits we think they're gonna, that Apple's gonna make from today all the way into the future. And then let's use the interest rate to bring those back to a present day value. And that is the market capitalization, the value that the market puts on Apple. So here's an interesting thought experiment. Imagine Apple tomorrow made an announcement to the world, okay? And they said, hey, listen world, we've had a great run, we're really excited about it, but we really want this now to really be in the best interest for humanity. And so from now forevermore, we are going to donate every single dollar of profit we ever make. So we're never going to make a dollar of profit again. We're going to donate every dollar of profit the, the second we get it from today for forever into the future. What would happen to the value of Apple stock? Based on stock analysis, the price of that stock would go to zero. Why? Because if you own a piece of the stock, you get a piece of the future profits. And if the future profits are zero, then the value of a piece of zero is zero. Now, second thing, what if on the same day Apple made a second announcement and they said, okay, we're going to donate all profits going forward, but we're also going to do a second thing. From today forevermore, the only way to buy things in our app store used by hundreds of millions of people is with Apple stock. That's the only way to buy things from our app store is you got to use Apple stock. Would the price of Apple stock still be zero? And I think we could all say, no, it would not. Because if I want to use my phone, I got to get apps. And to use apps, I got to be able to buy stuff in those apps. And if you're telling me the only way to buy stuff in those apps is with Apple stock, I need to go get some Apple stock. And so th there'd be demand and the price would come back up. It would no longer be zero. And so to us, this is at the core of the discussion that's happening right now with the SEC and others is, are these securities or are these currencies? And to us, it's a very clear answer. A security gives you a right to the future profit of an entity. You know, that's like me buying a stock in Apple. But a currency is only valuable to the degree that you can use it. It's, it's utility. The utility it has today, but also the utility we'll have tomorrow as more people build apps for the App Store, for example. And so I think the exciting, just another thing that's exciting about Ken is, like we are on the cutting edge of this. We are the ones having these top level conversations with partners, with regulators, 
with everybody we can, with the best lawyers, the best legal team to really drive this forward, this regulatory discussion. And so we are doing absolutely everything we can. And, and, I'll, and I'll add one more, one more thing to this actually, is we believe that there must be regulation in this space. That might not be super popular to say, but for us, there's so many of these token sales that are just blatant scams. It's hurting consumers. You know, it's it's false, people are running away with the money. It, it just, it's bad for everybody. It's bad for the space, it's bad for the industry. So the question to us is not, should tokens be regulated? The question is just, how should they be regulated and by who? Uh, and that's something we're on the, the cutting edge of. Okay, Dylan. For context, we were told that the Stellar Migration FAQ has been delayed for something bigger and better. We were told Jed McCaleb, I hope I'm saying that right, Jed, uh, would visit the Kin offices last week and that a joint AMA was on the horizon. On Thursday, Stellar announced a partnership with Keybase, an identical service referenced in your white paper. Okay, I'm not sure how we reference them, but I will take your word for it, Dylan. So. How has the Kin blockchain plan evolved in the last month? I promise this is my only question. <laughs> You're very kind, Dylan. You're kind to everybody else. Well, I like your questions. Okay, what happened with Stellar? We had an FAQ ready to go. And the, the core of the FAQ was, the question that people ha asked was, okay, you, you have Kin on Ethereum today. You're telling me that Kin is also going to exist on Stellar. So what's going to happen to my Ethereum Kin? Am I going to have to convert that? Do I lose that? What's going to happen? And so what I said on my on the last AMA was, no, if, if you have Kin on Ethereum, you don't have to do anything. It just stays there. Because what we're going to do is we're going to run two blockchains in parallel. So that as an investor, you can have your Kin on Ethereum and your hardware wallets. You can use it on exchanges. But you don't really need fast or cheap transactions. But if you're a consumer who's earning this and spending this very small amounts, uh, a lot of times a day in a bunch of different apps, you don't need all those integrations into hardware wallets and exchanges. What you need is fast, cheap, high scale transactions. So what we talked about is we're gonna have Kin exist on both with a way to then transfer them between blockchains in a, in a, in a one to one ratio. So we put this whole FAQ together, we're ready to publish it. And we decided to not publish it yet because we felt that the core question that everybody was asking is like, hey, what's going to happen to my Ethereum kin was already answered. And so we have been working with Stellar um, and we hope to share more on, on that and the progress of that and the results of that over the next few weeks. So that's our bad for talking about this FAQ and then not publishing it. We did that because we felt it was, you know, we answered the main questions that were in it. And so it'd be better to wait uh, for the results of the test that we could share. Kin in Q1. Kaiserf. You only get one question next time too. Kin in Q1. Will we be will we still be seeing all these things? The Kin it app, the three to five partnership announcements and the kick integration. Okay, let me give an, an update on those things one by one. So the Kinet app is an example app of a way that you could integrate Kin into a digital service. And it's a way for us to test user experience, it's a way for us to test the technology, it's just another test. In, in many ways, it's like us integrating it into Kick or integrating it into Kin Kong. It's, it's a way to test a bunch of these things so that we can then take those learnings, one, make Kin better, then two, also take those learnings to other digital service developers. So my understanding is that the Kin app is gonna continue to roll out. It will be an iterative thing. We've already signed up a thousand beta testers in the US, which we'll be testing it with. The three to five partnership announcements, as I talked about before, is we'll give an update on that on March 31st. Um, 
we're having great conversations where the team is working super hard to get deals signed so that we can announce it March 31st. But there are challenges, you know, there are challenges from a regulatory point of view, there's challenges, taxes and technology. Um, but the team is working really hard and we're excited to share an update with you at the end of this month. On the kick integration side, that will most likely happen in April or even early May. And let me explain that. With Kick, we want to use Kick to show two things. So the first is we want to use Kick to, to show the scalability of the blockchain. You know, I think there's this sort of meme right now in the industry that, oh, blockchains are great, but they can't scale. But don't worry, we'll fix that over the next three to four years. We think we're going to be able to show very soon with hard evidence and data that the fix to that problem, the scale that blockchains will scale to hundreds of thousands of users now, today, we think we'll be able to show that very soon. And the way we're going to show that is by integrating uh, Stellar into Kick. And then to use Kick to generate on all these millions of phones all around the world to generate a bunch of transactions to stress test the Stellar blockchain. And so that's going to happen over the next two weeks. Uh, hopefully we'll have two or three weeks while we'll the results. So that in, in that way, we will be able to share the results of that integration at the end of this month. But those will be test transactions, you know, just people sending transactions back and forth from real, real, real people on real phones with, you know, the kick app installed you know, hundreds of thousands of people. But that's more from a scalability point of view. The other thing we want to test with Kick is we want to show developers that we can make a consumer experience better with Kick. So that it's not just a way to make money. It is that, and that's great. It's a new way to make money in a way that's going to potentially save a bunch of developers from getting killed by these monopolies. But we also want to show something very special about this. You know, with ads, something like ads, ads are a way to make money but they make the experience for consumers worse. Kin is a way to make money, but we think it will also be a way to make the experience for consumers better. And that's what we want to show with Kick, that this is possible. It's possible to not only make money, but to also make the experience better. And so the thing Kick is working on right now is creating paid chat themes and a chat theme marketplace. So let me explain that. So in Kick, you have your, your chat app, and it, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to sort of customize the look and feel of your chat app for yourself, but also for everybody in the chat? Now, the traditional way of doing this is we sit there, we hire a bunch of artists to go out, create a bunch of themes, and then we put them in a store that you can choose between. What we want to do now is we want to create a marketplace where consumers can do this and where consumers can get paid for it. So now as a consumer, I can build a, I can go in, I can build a chat theme and I can list it for sale in Kin. And then other consumers can come in and say, you know what? I'll buy that for five Kin. We're creating a marketplace where Kin becomes this digital sharing economy, in this case, a marketplace for chat themes and sidekick. To do this, Kick needs uh, earn and spend, custom earning and custom spending APIs to be available in the SDK. And so that's the top priority for the team right now is to get those APIs in, which will be by mid-April. As soon as those APIs are in, Kick will hook them up to launch the first paid chat themes for you know, a, a large scale of users. And at the same time, we'll be doing that on the new scaled Stellar blockchain. And so that will happen late April, but probably sometime in May. I think you know, if I step back for a second, just a meta point on that, the deadlines I'm sharing with you and the deadlines that we share with you through whatever forums, the Telegram channels, Reddit, uh, YouTube AMAs, the deadlines we share with you are the same deadlines that we have internally. And the deadlines that we set internally are aggressive. And they're purposely aggressive. You know, we want to say this is a stretch goal and we want to hit it. And so what that does mean is sometimes those dates are going to slip. But you know, there was some, there's a thread on Reddit that I participated in last week where we were talking about, you know, when we make commitments, we are being aggressive. 
So it does mean that you have to give us some understanding that there should be some understanding when, when those slip, but it is very helpful to feel the pressure of the community to keep those commitments. And that's why we're doing it. That's why we don't have different you know, commitments that we say internally from externally, we are all in this together. And so we're the dates we have internally are the dates that you're getting, that everybody is getting externally. And so we are being aggressive, hold us accountable to those, pressure us to make sure we hit those like this, you know, this, we need a, a partnership announcement by March 31st. What's happening? What's happening? That's helpful. Uh, and so keep doing that. And we're excited to roll this out. Okay. Besides kick, can you elaborate on the genre of apps we can expect to be announced here soon without giving us names? And also the amount of user base we can expect from those digital partners. Okay, I'll take that one at a time. So first, what type of apps? The types of apps that we are going after and developers, digital services that we are going after are digital services that are community driven. So let me step back for a second. With Kin, what we're trying to do is build a digital sharing economy. What does that mean? What does that mean, a digital sharing economy? It, it's basically a place that you can go as a user, you can offer your services, your digital services, whether that's giving great advice, creating great content, hosting a great experience, whatever that is, whatever app you use, and you can offer that to the community, and then they can compensate you for that. They can say, hey, I'll pay 5K for your advice, or I'll put forward 5K to crowdfund your next sticker, or you know, I'll pay 5K to get into your group chat. That's what we mean by digital sharing economy. I'm, I'm coming in, I'm sharing my talents with you, I'm getting compensated, and then I'm turning around and enjoying the talents of others. So when we think about which digital services we should go after, it's clear, it's ones where communities are already forming, where consumers are already providing value to each other. You know, in, in where are people creating music for each other? Where are people creating uh, writing for each other? Where are people giving advice to each other? Where are people hosting group chats for each other? Where are people hosting experiences for each other? Where are people creating content for each other? And where are people offering expertise to each other? These are the areas that we're going after. And I think it's, it's worth mentioning something that's interesting about this is our Series A investor, you know, the, 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 the venture capitalist that put the first money into Kick, one of them is a venture firm by the name of Union Square Ventures. And their investment thesis actually is large communities of highly engaged users. And so it's actually sort of cool that we've been able to have a bunch of these conversations really fast through those relationships because Kick is a community of highly engaged users, but so are all their other companies, all their other investments. And so it's sort of a, an interesting thing that you know, the venture capitalist portfolio that we are part of is community driven. And that's what Kin needs. That's what Kin is going to work best for is community driven partners. So that's sort of the genre we're looking at community driven consumers coming together, providing value to each other on the amount of the user base. I think they go all the way from, you know, hundreds of thousands of users to tens of millions of users. But what I will say is we, th we think we need both, you know, if I, just to back, what is our partnership strategy? Maybe it's the question. We need both big partners, but we also need to enable a bunch of small partners. Let me explain. The big partners are great because they bring a lot of validity, credibility, and sort of acceleration to the whole kin movement because they already have all these consumers using their services. The challenge with them though, is they have a lot to lose. They're like kick, you know, okay, let us first get the best lawyers. Let's, you know, have a lot of conversations. Let's do a lot of legal docs because when you're that big, you just gotta be careful. You have a lot to lose. So we're focusing on 
announcing these big partnerships and making lots of good progress there. And we'll update you at the end of the month. But at the same time, we want to enable thousands, tens of thousands of smaller developers. You know, one, two person teams who want to build for this new kin era from scratch. And so, you know, if people sitting here watching the say, AMA, you know, how can I help? Or you know, what are the opportunities here is one of the big things that's going to be an opportunity is for you all to build apps that use kin as well. And what we need to deliver first, what kin needs to deliver first to make this possible is two things. One is an SDK that anybody can use. And one is, and the second is the kin reward engine that allows anyone to get paid. Once we have those two things, any developer will be able to come in and build an experience. And any developer will then be able to get paid for creating that experience. And I think this is going to be really interesting because when you look at all the big platforms of the past, uh, mobile, the web, et cetera, the big successes that were created in the space were usually created by young, small teams who were building for this era of platform from scratch. You know, Kick, Instagram, WhatsApp were built by very small, young teams. Um, the big websites were built by very small, big teams. And so when I look at Kin, I think there's a big opportunity as well. And I think what history will show is a lot of the innovation and a lot of the a lot of the innovation will come from and a lot of the reward will go to small young teams who are building for this era of technology from scratch. And so this is sort of when you ask me the genre, it's community driven, people providing value to each other. But then the size is, yes, we got to get those big guys on board. You know, a lot of those big guys then built big apps. They built big websites. We have to get those big guys on board, and we will. But we also need to enable all those little guys to come out and be that innovative force with nothing to lose, uh, building for Kin as well. Uh, so I think it will be both. And with that, we are out of time. And so thanks for joining today, and I look forward to seeing you in a month. Thanks.